In this video we are looking at ionic compounds and precipitation reactions. So we'll look at the following question. Write the net ionic equation for the precipitation reaction that occurs when solutions of magnesium sulfate and sodium carbonate are mixed. So the first step is to work out the ionic formula for these two compounds. So our first compound is magnesium sulfate. Now to write the formula for magnesium sulfate, the first thing we need to do is look at what it is made up of. It is made up of magnesium ions and it is made up of sulfate ions. So what do magnesium ions look like? If we look at our periodic table, we can see the chemical symbol for magnesium is Mg. And if we also look at our periodic table, we can see that magnesium is in the second group on the periodic table. So that means it will have a two plus charge when it is present as an ion. So we can go ahead and write the charge on the magnesium as two plus. Now sulfate is an example of a complex ion and these are common ions that you will come across in any of these sort of questions and you just need to remember the formula for these complex ions. So sulfate is SO4 2 minus and the reason they're called complex ions and in this case it is an anion is because it is made up of more than one atom. So we have a sulfur atom bonded to four oxygen atoms and the entire ion has a charge of 2 minus. So those are the two ions that make up magnesium sulfate. Now to write the ionic formula for magnesium sulfate, we need to combine these two ions to form a ionic compound. Now you notice the ions have charges. Ionic compounds do not have charges. They are neutral compounds. So we need to cancel out these charges when we um, combine the two ions in order to make sure that the ionic compound is neutral overall. Now the easiest way to do this is use the crossover method where we bring the number of your cation down below your anion and the same thing on your anion down below the cation. And in this case we will end up with Mg2SO42. Now for those of you that already know the formula for magnesium sulfate, you will know this is not correct and that is because we can further simplify this. And in that case we will make this a 1 and we will also make this a 1. So we are left with magnesium sulfate, MgSO4. So you always need to write it in its most simplified form. So those twos get reduced down to a one. So you have one magnesium ion for every one sulfate ion. So that is the ionic formula for magnesium sulfate. Now we'll do the same thing for sodium carbonate. So sodium carbonate is made up of sodium ions. Now from your periodic table, again, I'll bring it up. The periodic table, sodium is in group number one. So it has a charge of one plus. Now when we have uh, ions with charges of one plus, we don't need to put the one, we just put the plus sign in. And carbonate is another example of one of those complex anions that you will need to remember and it is CO3 with an overall charge of 2 minus. Now again in order to make the ionic formula we need to make sure that it is a neutral compound so the charges need to balance. Now in this particular question it's a, not as simple as the magnesium sulfate because when we do the crossover method and bring the sodium down, uh, sorry, the charge on the sodium down, and same for your carbonate, you will end up having Na, and we're using that two that's above the carbonate, and CO3, and there's a one above the sodium that we can't see, so there really is one carbonate ion. 
So that is the correct formula for sodium carbonate. And you can double check that it makes sense. So in order to have a neutral compound, we need two of the positive sodium ions to balance out the two minus charge on the carbonate ions. So that formula for sodium carbonate does not need to be simplified. It is already simplified. Okay, so now we have our two uh, ionic compounds that we are now mixing. Now, when they are written as ionic compounds, that means they are in their solid form. They are as their salts, they're not dissolved in water just yet. Now, as this question states that we have a solution of magnesium sulfate and a solution of sodium carbonate, we can represent these solutions in these beakers. So if we have a solution of magnesium sulfate, it is now aqueous. And really that means we have our ions floating around in solution with water molecules. Now if we mix that solution with another one containing our sodium carbonate, now remember these Solid salts have been dissolved in water, so now their state is aqueous, which means the ions are floating around in solution. So if we then mix these two solutions together, what we get is a beaker full of a number of different ions. So we have our magnesium ions, we have carbonate ions, and we also have our sodium and sulfate ions floating around in solution with the water molecules. Now, as this question states that we, ha we do have a reaction that is occurring, we are mixing two solutions and somehow we are forming a brand new compound that is a solid. So we need to first look at what are the possible two new compounds that we are forming if we mix these two solutions. So we can do that quite easily. So if we have, these are our four ions floating around in solution. Our first possibility for a new compound would be between magnesium and carbonate ions. And our second possibility for a new compound would be between our sodium ions and our sulfate ions. Now these are the new compounds. Obviously we've already mixed magnesium sulfate and sodium carbonate. So we're looking for two new compounds that we might form. Now if we want to write the ionic formula for these two new compounds, so we'll start with uh, the magnesium carbonate. So again, you can use the crossover method here to write the proper ionic formula. MgCO3. In this case, the two plus charge on the magnesium ions cancels out the two minus charge on the carbonate and we are left with MgCO3 as our neutral compound. Now, we don't know yet if this is a solid or aqueous because we are trying to figure that out. If we are forming, if we have a precipitation reaction occurring, we know that one of these two possibilities is a solid, and that is the precipitation reaction that's occurring. So now for our sodium sulfate. Again, you can use the crossover method here. So bring the two down below the sodium, and you are left with Na2SO4. And again, we need to work out if it is a solid or aqueous. So how do we work out which of our two possibilities is solid or aqueous? We look at our solubility rules table. So we'll start off by looking at sodium sulfate. So looking at a solubility rules table, in the yellow highlighted section, you can see that sulfates are typically soluble. And there is no exception to the rule for sodium. So we can say that sodium sulfate is soluble and it will not form a solid in this case. So that means when you are, if you are doing this reaction, the sodium sulfate will remain as ions in the solution and it will not form a precipitate. 
because it can dissolve, so it will not be present as a solid. Now we'll do the same for magnesium carbonate, so looking at our solubility rules table. So if we come down to the green highlighted section, we can see that carbonates are insoluble. So that's a general rule for your carbonate uh, ionic compounds. So we can say that and magnesium is not an exception to this rule. So we know that magnesium carbonate is actually insoluble, meaning it will be a solid. Insoluble, meaning it will not dissolve. So even though it's uh, present in water, it's not soluble, so it remains as a white precipitate. Okay, so now we know that which one is aqueous and which one is solid, we can write our final equation. Magnesium sulfate aqueous plus sodium carbonate aqueous forms sodium sulfate aqueous and magnesium carbonate solid. So that is the full balanced equation for this precipitation reaction. But in general, we are only really interested in the net ionic equation because that way we can get rid of any spectator ions that aren't undergoing any reaction themselves. So, and as I've stated before, whenever we have an aqueous uh, ionic compound in a formula, that means that really it is present as its ions. So if we wanted to, we could write this equation out with just the ions shown. Sulfate ions, we have two sodium ions and carbonate ions. sulfate ions. Now don't forget that your magnesium carbonate is a solid, so it is not present as ions. Okay, so this is the, the equation written out with all the ions, and it makes it easier to see which ions are spectators meaning that they are present on the left-hand side of the reaction arrow and also on the right-hand side. So that means they didn't undergo any change. They are present at the start and at the end. So we can go ahead and cancel out any of our spectator ions in this equation. So on the left-hand side, we have a sulfate ion. And on the right-hand side, we have a sulfate ion. So we can cancel that out. Same thing for our sodium ions. And then we should be left with our magnesium and our carbonate ions forming magnesium carbonate. And this would be our final net ionic equation. Magnesium ions. Don't forget to always write your states. Carbonate ions forming solid magnesium carbonate. And that is the final answer to the net ionic equation for this precipitation reaction.